Citizens of Reject Nation, welcome to another episode of Koi's Comic Corner. I am so excited to have you with me today. Now today, we're going to be talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer. I was in that room, I was in Hall H, and it was incredibly powerful, but we're going to talk about the trailer, we're going to talk about my thoughts and theories on that trailer, and what it implies for how I think the movie is going to round out, and solve some mysteries. I think a lot of people didn't realize how big of mysteries they were. Now, I'm going to focus on very important things like High Evolutionary, Gamora, Rocket Raccoon, not necessarily a play-by-play -play of the trailer itself because there's tons of those videos already and I'm coming from a comic book background not just a, a theory background I'm gonna give you comic informed theories as best I can please leave a like those help us very much please comment that's how I know what you folks want to see more of please also subscribe and hit that bell so you can know when I make more koi comic corners and thank you to everyone who has been following me on TikTok. those responses have been amazing and I appreciate it that's where I do all my short form content to parallel this long form stuff for you all right Let's get into it. Now, I want to focus on the important things in this trailer, like I said, but I also want to focus on how that room felt. So this room was way sadder than I expected. There is a revelry to Hall H. There is an inherent cheering and, and, and exuberance in Hall H. That was there. Don't get me wrong. James Gunn coming on stage was incredible. The cheers for the cast walking on stage, that was all a lot. But there was a somberness once everyone was on stage. There was a beautiful, bittersweet, melancholy that I wasn't expecting. Everyone was crying on that stage. I think this movie breaks us. The entire cast watched that trailer backstage for the first time and then came out weeping. There was a lot of emotion on that stage. And it's something that I felt in the entire Marvel Hall H panel. I mean, obviously, the Wakanda Forever trailer, you saw it and probably cried at home. Imagine being around 6,000 people that were also experiencing this art, as well as the cast who made this art that knows what that represents and what's to come. So the entire Hall H was very heavy, very melancholic, and especially this and the Wakanda Forever trailer. And I think that does spell certain doom for a lot of members of this cast. Things go poorly for the Guardians of the Galaxy, especially for Rocket Raccoon. Now, this kicks off with Do You Realize by the Flaming Lips, which is a very somber remix of this song. And that really meshes, if, if James Gunn's gonna do a song, it's, it's important. The man is the master of the needle drop. James Gunn and Edgar Wright have the best manipulation of emotion with pop music of anyone working right now. They know what they're doing. And this version of The Flaming Lips broke us immediately. It is, it is somber, it talks about death, it really kind of marinades into you with sadness. Now, there's literally a line in this song that says, do you realize that everyone you know will someday die? I think that's going to be the Guardians of the Galaxy. James Gunn did come out on stage saying, just because a story is reaching its end doesn't mean everyone is going to die, but I think that is either maybe true, but also that's been the rumor for a while. He's going to have to mislead us in some way. I don't know if it's going to be literally seven for seven Guardians bite it, but I do think the death toll on this film is going to be substantial. And I do think it does warrant bringing up again that he said this is the last time we will see this iteration of the Guardians of the Galaxy. In addition to the somber tone, there were moments of levity. Um, the, specifically, we did have a moment where Karen Gillan said that her character does have some levity now that her dad Thanos has passed away. And another important sequence, I think, is there's a moment where Quill sees the Ravagers in their new installment. And it looks like we do get the Guardians 2 Ravagers that we met. I think Stallone come back and Michael Rosenbaum comes back. I think those characters are here, which is is exciting but we see those ravagers and there's a moment of tension where he's like no no no, i'm one of you I'm, I'm a ravager i'm wondering one why he feels that need to defend and how that all works out but two we then get a very important moment where our new gamora appears and she looks awesome her hair is different she's got this warrior stance now when we met her in guardians one she was obviously a warrior she's been a badass in all the films but her body language and her physicality and a lot of those elements already lend themselves to being a different Gamora. I'm fascinated because this is the first time I think that we've had a multiversal impact like this, where a character from another multiverse is now in our multiverse. Gamora's gone. Our Gamora's not with us. We have a new one. And we're seeing the impact of having a different version of a character be a fish out of water with the character we've known and loved. This is a very sad, messed up 51st dates with superheroes. Uh, we're going to see how it plays out, but it was really great to see Gamora back, and I'm really excited to see what Zoe does portraying this character completely differently. Uh, I do think Nebula is going to be a little bit different in this film. We didn't get to see a lot of it, but we did see her on stage discussing it, as well as this really beautiful sequence where they're all skydiving effectively through space. Space diving. I don't know if that's a term. But they're all wearing these different colored suits, and it's this beautiful cosmic landscape 
landscape that is stunning and these spiraling colors and it's James Gunn, it's stunning. But you hear to break the beauty Quill talking to Gamora and trying to basically convince her things are okay and win her back and like trying to court her all over again and they land and she calls him Quinn. And that obviously is a slight bit of comedy, but it's such sad comedy. It's a beautiful, bittersweet. I'll, I'll keep using that because that's how I felt. It, it is funny, but it's that, ha, huh, oof. Like it's that sad laugh that you get when things go wrong. And then the joke is the one-two punch of good humor of, then you realize that everyone's been able to hear it and they've all just been wanting it to stop. So it does have moments of humor, but they're a lot more tinged in sadness. If you thought Guardians 2 was sad, which I did, daddy issues, lots of crying. It is about as further into sadness as Guardians 1 to Guardians 2. And Guardians 1 has plenty of sad, so this looks brutal. Now, I've got some theories and they are MCU spanning. I think High Evolutionary, who's introduced here, is responsible for Rocket Raccoon. It's very strongly implied in the trailer. I'm not the first one to think so, but it seems like someone is reaching into Baby Rocket's cage and pulling him out. I think that's gonna be the High Evolutionary, and I think they are going to be seeking revenge for their friend Rocket. There's a line in the trailer where he, basically someone asks off screen, what happened to Rocket? And Quill says he doesn't talk about it. I think we're gonna see that with High Evolutionary. Now, my theory in conjunction with the High Evolutionary made Rocket theory is that he also might have made the Sovereign. His success might be Adam Warlock, and his moderate success, or some might perceive failure, might be Rocket Raccoon. Now, Rocket has been described as the saddest creature in the galaxy by James Gunn before and again at this panel. I think this movie is going to be diving into the origins of Rocket. I think it's going to be tragic. I think it's going to be so sad that the Guardians risk everything to get revenge on a character that basically evolves people a character who manipulates reality itself to change how things evolve. And then he came out. We had the high evolutionary come out of the room and do a long walk. And he said a few lines of like, you people disgust me. This is why we have to evolve you. Like some fun villain stuff. But that was about all the levity we got was having some villainy in that room to counteract a very, very sad audience and a very sad cast. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think this trilogy is going to end Empire, not end Return of the Jedi. I think that high evolutionary is going to succeed in a lot of ways. And I think Adam Warlock is going to be our hero because he's going to be conflicted. I think we're going to find out that he maybe, this is a theory, has been a, a creature created by the very thing they're hunting. Is that going to cause some conflict? Like, does maybe he start as an enemy? Does maybe he believe in the high evolutionary at first and fight the Guardians of the Galaxy? Or does he have the Frankenstein thing where he, he doesn't like his creator? There's a lot of interesting elements you can do with Adam Warlock. Fantastic character, by the way. Check out Jim Starlin's Adam Warlock stuff. Also, Will Poulter looks incredible. Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. It's, it's a very quick moment in the trailer, but he looks amazing. Now, I do think, and one thing I want to stress is this does feel like the movie that James Gunn has always wanted to make. Uh, Marvel's done an incredible job making the movie James Gunn has built. Like, you watch Guardians 1, I would argue Guardians 1 influenced the entire MCU going more cosmic because of its success. We'll never know for sure, but I feel like that steered the ship in a different way. I think this is the best way to get the Adam Warlock that was teased back in Guardians 2. We saw the cocoon. I heard even that there was reference to moments with Adam Warlock, hopefully from the first movie, and definitely Rocket Raccoon. If you go back to Guardians 1, they talk about Rocket Raccoon being something that is, is manipulated and created. I think this has been the movie that was going to end the trilogy from the beginning. I think it's really beautiful that Marvel has been like, hey, make that film, because this looks like something we haven't seen before. The atmosphere in the trailer, the scope, the epic, it's already a space epic. This looks even bigger than anything we've seen. I don't know if High Evolutionary is going to continue into the MCU, but I will say that this feels like a great way to introduce pure malice. We're getting Kang the Conqueror, pure malice. We're getting Doctor Doom, known for being a dictator fascist monster. I love the idea that High Evolutionary kicks off this insane, oh my god, these villains are awful kick. And what better way to do that than by manipulating a baby raccoon? This is going to be a great movie. I'm really excited and I'm so honored to have been in that room. We all got to cathartively, collectively cry for our Guardians of the Galaxy, including the cast themselves. This was wonderful. I can't wait for it to come out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you guys want to hear more about other moments in Hall H, if you want to hear more about some theories, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to hear about. You guys are the co-hosts of Koi's Comic Corner. Greg and John not here. I'm running the stage. Greg's right physically. He's just not here. He's just, he's left, but he's off camera. So the giggles are on camera. I appreciate you all very much. Go hug your moms. I love you. Bye.